This is Lindsay Clark, your primary instructor for current topics in medical laboratory sciences. This is lecture 26. Um, this is a quick review of lab math 1 and 2. Um, we're just going to quickly go over those concepts again. And um, I just want to highlight what I want you guys to know from those lectures. So we'll jump right in. Um, for simple dilutions, remember there are always two parts. So the sample to be diluted and the diluent. And the formula for a simple dilution is sample volume divided by total volume. I don't want you guys to get confused by this formula. So remember to determine the dilution factor, you divide the total volume by the sample volume, which is the inverse of the simple dilution formula. For me, it is easier to just remember the formula to determine the dilution factor because once you have your dilution factor, you can figure out your dilution very easily, right? So if it's easier for you to just remember that, then I want you to just remember that um, and forget about the other formula if that's confusing you. For our first simple dilution practice problem, uh, we have 0 0.1 milliliters of plasma added to 0 0.9 milliliters of diluent. We want to know what is the final dilution. So let's break this down. Um, I have noticed that some students are forgetting to calculate the total volume. And instead, they're dividing the initial sample volume by the diluent volume. Um, that's going to give you the incorrect dilution. So you always want to make sure that you are um, finding your total volume. Okay, so with this problem, we're going to start with the total volume, which is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.9 milliliters, and that equals 1 milliliter. So the initial volume, or sometimes called the sample volume, is 0 0.1 milliliters. So what's next? Well, let's determine the dilution factor. And to do that, we are going to divide 1.0 mLs by 0 0.1 mLs. This is going to give us 10. Now 10 is our dilution factor, and we want to know what is the final dilution. So we know that the dilution factor is just the reciprocal of our dilution, so we can determine now that our dilution is just 1 to 10. So for practice problem two, you need to make a one to three dilution with a total volume of 12 milliliters. How much plasma do you need and how much diluent will you need? Well, let's start by determining what formula we need to use. So we know the dilution and we know the total volume we need. So the formula we're going to use will be sample volume divided by total volume equals X over total volume. So now we're going to plug in our numbers. And when we do that, we get 1 over 3 equals x over 12. And we're going to reduce this down. We get 3x equals 12. And then we solve, and we get x equals 4 milliliters. So this answer here actually tells us the amount of plasma that we need. So we know that we need 4 milliliters of plasma. But we still want to know how much diluent we need. So if we set up this formula, we have 4 milliliters of plasma plus X amount of diluent equals 12 mils total volume, we can determine that we need 8 milliliters of diluent. So we're going to do one more simple dilution practice problem. If we make a 1 to 4 dilution with a stock solution that has a concentration of 12%, what is the concentration after dilution? So again, let's start with which formula we're going to use. We have a dilution and an original concentration, so we're going to use this formula. Original concentration times dilution equals new concentration. So we're going to plug our numbers in. When we get 12% times 1 to 4 equals new concentration. If we solve that, we get 3%. And that is our concentration after dilution. So next, um, I just want to do a quick reminder about multiple and serial dilutions. 
So our multiple dilutions are going to be a series of dilutions where each dilution is different. So for example, in the image we have here, um, tube one is undiluted, tube two is one to five, tube three is one to two, tube four is one to four, tube five is one to five, and tube six is one to 10. So you can see that those are all different dilutions. And serial dilutions are a series of dilutions where each dilution, um, each tube is the same dilution. So for example, again, tube one is undiluted, tube two is one to five, tube three is one to five, tube four is one to five, and so on through tube six. So all, your, all of your dilutions are the same. And remember, this can also be referred to as a five-fold dilution. So here are the formulas that are going to be used for multiple and serial dilutions. Now don't forget these formulas are the same whether you're working with multiple dilutions or serial dilutions. So the first one there, we can determine the final dilution in a series just by multiplying all the dilutions. So dilution one times dilution two times dilution three and so on. And our second formula, we can determine the final concentration of sample by dividing the original concentration by the final dilution. So let's go into a couple practice problems. So first we'll do a multiple dilutions practice problem. We have a sample with a concentration of 6,400 milligrams per deciliter. The sample was diluted as follows. Tube one is undiluted. Tube two is one to two. Tube three is one to six. Tube four is one to four. Tube five is one to three and tube six is one to 10. So this is a two part question. The first part, what is the dilution factor in the final tube? And the second part, we wanna know the concentration of sample in each tube. So we'll start with the first part. What is the dilution factor in the final tube? First, let's decide what formula we're going to use. Since we're looking for the dilution factor in the final tube, we need to determine the final dilution in that tube. And to do that, we're gonna use this formula. Your final dilution is equal to dilution one times dilution two times dilution three and so on. So we will multiply these dilutions to get a final dilution of one to 1,440. But remember, this question is asking for the dilution factor. So the actual answer is just 1,440. So always make sure you are checking the question and that you're giving the right answer. So if you had this question and you were to answer one to 1440, your answer would be incorrect. The second part of this practice problem asks what the concentration is in each tube. So what formula are we gonna use? Well, we're looking for the final concentration in each tube, and we know the original concentration. So this is the formula we're gonna use. Final concentration of sample equals original concentration divided by final dilution. So our initial concentration was 6,400 milligrams per deciliter. And this will be unchanged for tube one since tube one is undiluted. For tube two, we will divide 6,400 by two, and that's gonna give us 3,200 milligrams per deciliter. Now be careful for tube three. For tube three, we're gonna divide 6,400 by 12. And we divide by 12 because we have to divide by the final dilution in each tube. The final dilution in tube three is one to 12. And that's because we multiply one to two from tube two by one to six in tube three, which gives us a final dilution of one to 12. So 6,400 divided by 12 gives us 533 milligrams per deciliter. And this answer is rounded. So if you get a decimal, it's okay, just round it. Now for tube four, again, we're gonna multiply. So we're gonna divide 6,400 by 48. And we get 48 from multiplying 12 by four. 
And when we divide this, we get 133 milligrams per deciliter. So for tube five, we get 6,400 divided by 144, and that's gonna give us 44 milligrams per deciliter. And finally, for tube six, we are going to divide 6,400 by 1440, and this is going to give us four milligrams per deciliter. So those concentrations, that would be your answers. That's what it's asking for the concentration in each tube. So let's do one serial dilutions practice problem. And the concentration of our sample is 1800 milligrams per deciliter. We did a one to four dilution series through tube six, assuming tube one is undiluted. So what is the dilution factor in the final tube? And the second part of this question, what is the concentration of sample in the final tube? So for the first part, we need to determine first the dilution in the final tube. So remember to get that, we just have to multiply the dilutions to find our final dilution. So we multiply one to four um, by itself five times, and that's gonna give us 1,024. So remember that's the reciprocal, and we get our dilution is one to 1,024. Now you could also calculate four to the fifth and get this same answer. So whichever way works better for you, um, do it that way. So our final dilution, 1 to 1,024, but we remember we want to know the dilution factor. And so our answer here is just 1,024. Now the second part of this problem asks, what is the sample concentration in the final tube? So remember, we can calculate this by dividing the original concentration, which is 1,800 milligrams per deciliter, by the final dilution, which we just determined is 1 to 1,024. This is going to give us a final concentration of 1.76 milligrams per deciliter in tube 6. So again, this was just a real quick overview of concepts that we covered in Lab Math 1 and 2. I just wanted to run through a few more practice problems with you guys. If you have questions, please let me know. Um, as always, my contact information is listed here, um, and you can contact me with any questions that you have. Um, here, I just want to talk real quick about what's coming up. We, um, we have lab stats coming up. So there will be some documents posted in Blackboard for you guys to review, and that will include some terminology and some formulas that we're gonna talk about in our next lecture. So. It's a good idea to review these so that you guys will be prepared for the lab stats lectures. Let me know if you guys have any questions.